Very recently, the following images were leaked on Reddit. These pictures are all basically the same from different angles, supposedly revealing the name of the next Destiny expansion, Rise of Iron. The user who created the Reddit thread has since deleted the thread. We have a titan standing with a giant flaming axe surrounded by some wolves in full Iron Banner gear. For the record, the Iron Banner's actual reason for existence is to honor the Iron Lords who helped defend the city during the Battle of the Twilight Gap, one of the largest battles in recent memory. Also, for the record, I doubt very much that we will have a PvP-themed expansion. A lot of people might have thought the next expansion was Cabal-based, but at this point, who knows? I wrote a whole bunch of stuff before I decided to drop this in front of a Zer video instead of posting it by itself, and since I waited, more info has come to light. An article on Kotaku claims that the image is indeed true according to sources that they have. Jason, the author, has been right a couple of times about Destiny-related leaks, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was true. How or even if this is significantly linked to the Iron Banner event is unknown at this time. The article in question is linked in the description. I also reached out to a source, but obviously I was not going to hear back, nor do I think Bungie will say anything until E3. E3 is about a month away, and even though Activision does not have a booth this year, that won't stop their main titles from appearing elsewhere, and that potentially includes Destiny. Without any Dark Below or House of Wolves style expansions happening over the past year, it's a pretty safe bet that Bungie and Activision will have something to show off at E3 discussing the major fall update. During the Raid Along stream on May 18th, it was mentioned in passing that a new raid does indeed exist, but this really shouldn't surprise anyone. I think Bungie knows to go without a raid for over a year is probably a bad idea. Kotaku claims that this is real, it certainly looks very professionally done, but obviously Bungie is not going to be addressing this. I would be very, very surprised if they do. We're probably going to be waiting until E3 until we hear about this in any sort of official manner. Hello everyone, welcome to Zer week number 89. He is over by the speaker, chilling by the railing. Let's see what he's got. Starting from the bottom, we have Emerald Coil and Void Drive. For those rare blue quality sparrows, Three heavy ammo packs for one strange coin, five three of coins for seven strange coins, three glass needles for a bunch of stuff, one more of light for two strange coins. Titans, you are getting the glass house. We have side bonuses of hands-on and second thoughts, bonus super energy from special weapon kills and melee kills, and we also have invigoration. The main bonus makes it so blessing of light and weapons of light lasts longer, the buff on you. This exotic was recently brought up to year two, as were all of the other exotics that Xur is selling today. Fancy that. They also made the glass house finally take shaders, making it actually kind of look cool now. I probably don't give this helm enough credit, but in King's Fall, it's not a bad pick. In fact, if you're running Defender Titan, it's probably a top two or top three pick. The reason why I'm not super big on it is because while longer lasting buffs are good in King's Fall and are pretty usable there. There are very few times where you are away from a Ward of Dawn long enough to make this important. On Golgroth, it's great, but on a lot of other fights, it's not hugely necessary, it's just kind of a nice little side bonus. In stuff that isn't the raid, I really don't think it's greatly needed, but once again, it's, it's not a terrible choice. Hunters, you're getting Kepri's Sting. We have side bonuses of Switchblade and Impact Induction. Bonus grenade energy on those melee hits. And we have Hand Cannon and Fusion Rifle Reload Speed bonuses. The main bonus makes it so crouching turns you invisible after a short time. Melees from behind deal four times the damage when invisible and also leave damage over time. These are a unique set of gloves with a cool bonus that will rarely ever be useful. It takes a lot of setup for something without a huge amount of a payoff. For anything that will die in one stab, you probably could have killed them with one shot or one sniper shot. For anything that doesn't, you probably shouldn't be that close to it in the first place because it's just going to turn around and slap you in the face. It's a fun gimmick exotic, but for actual use in important activities, I don't really think you need to bother. But 
you know, it's fun for heroic strikes and, and general goofing around. Warlocks, you are getting Sunbreakers. We have side bonuses of increased grenade throw distance and bonus grenade energy on melee hits. We also have scout rifle or fusion rifle reload speed bonuses. The main bonus has your solar grenades stick around for longer while also giving you an extra solar grenade. Well, now that you get two grenades with this, they're definitely better. If you can land these solar grenades on bosses in PvE, they tick for a lot of damage. I think people can underestimate how much damage that long-lasting solar grenade can really do, because it, it adds up. In PvP, Firebolts are probably still the most popular, but if you land a Viking Funeral Touch of Flame solar grenade right on someone, they're going to melt pretty quickly, and having two grenades ready to do that is really nice. They're very solid for objective-based modes in PvP, and otherwise are not too shabby everywhere else. The weapon of the week is Universal Remote. This is a unique shotgun in that it goes in your primary slot, and if it weren't for that fact, I don't think anyone would ever use it. Stats-wise, it is pretty average as a shotgun, with its main bonus rewarding those of you with very accurate shooting while aiming down sights. The reason it is used in PvP is because you don't need to worry about ammo at all since it's a primary. Other shotguns are way better than Universal Remote from a stat perspective for PvP, but Universal Remote is definitely the most accessible in that ammo is very plentiful. This plus a sniper gives a fun but extreme PvP loadout. In PvE, it is an average shotgun. For heroic strikes and stuff like that, it can be a pretty fun gun, but obviously for anything that you need to take seriously, you're not going to be using this thing at all. It is not a good first exotic if you're looking for your first exotic primary weapon, but if you have the spare coin, it's worth playing around with. The Legacy Engram of the week is body armor that's year one armor at year one power levels. If you find something that is in year two, It'll unlock at your year two blueprint vendor. That is going to do it for Zur week number 89. I got something kind of cool coming to you guys tomorrow. Something that's going to hit those nostalgia buttons pretty hard. Otherwise, I've been taking it easy. That Rise of Irons, or Rise of Iron picture was uh, something, huh? Something to stir people up. Always nice to get a little hype going, even if it was, you know, something unofficial or leaked or whatever. Hopefully, E3 is, is going to have some more, but, you know, seeing that picture the other day was, uh, was something. Very unexpected. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time.